segment two, Golden Black Live. We're having as much fun off the set as we are on, but uh, Coach is a – He's always been lively, but you know, maybe because you're a few years removed from the bench, you can you talk more freely. But uh, there's just a lot of good stories to tell. And and going back to to the three P team, any uh, you know, you there's there's so many stories about the '95 and '96 teams and coming out of nowhere. But some of your favorite memories as you look back at that group and say it was special. But uh, individuals or things, the moments in time that you remember how special it was. Well, I think the one thing you mentioned a while ago was Conzo Martin was one of those guys that uh, when I first had him as a freshman, I thought, I thought, why did we recruit this guy? Yeah. And he was a great kid. He had a yeah. great mother. Yeah. His mother was the best. Yeah. And then he just kept developing. He kept getting yeah. better every year and every year and every year. He was the best leader I ever had. Yeah. So uh, he just developed into one of those players. He could get open, unbelievably get open. And I, when I watched tapes, I said, like, how did he do that? Yeah. So it was like, he just learned how to get open. He got it. He knew how to do, how to use his body for leverage and stuff, and he was very clever about getting open for a pass or a jump shot. So uh, he, he was a special guy because of the fact that where he came from was a tough life. Yes. And, and then when he played here for me, he didn't get his degree, so he went to, to uh, overseas and played two or three years and came back, and he said, Coach, you know, I don't have any energy. So he went to the doctor, and he found out he had lung cancer. Yeah. So then he took chemo and went through radiation and got that taken care of. So he fought through all that, was really a tough guy through that. And I said, if you get yourself well and come back to college and go to school and get your degree, I'll hire you as my assistant. So he got his degree and I hired him and then he just took off. He was yeah. my assistant for a year or so and then he went to Missouri State and then he went to Tennessee, and now he's the head coach in California. So he's a great story. Somebody ought to do a movie on him. Yeah, he is. He's still my favorite, my most I, – I keep the cover of gold and black on the, on the front of my desk. It's never give up. And during there was a picture of him during when he was pretty compromised – uh, during his fight with cancer, but a very inspirational person. And he now has a very good young basketball yes, team at does. Cal. They're, they're really going to be uh, fun to watch. I think he's got a little bit of a problem. You know, he had high expectations because yeah. he had a number one rating team in the recruiting in the nation. And now they want him to, you know, they think because you had great recruits, that, you know, they're going to be go to the Final Four. That's not the way it works. These guys got to learn how to play. We never had a good team here. With young kids, yeah. If you had seniors in red shirts, we were pretty good. That so darn you, that yeah. darn internet causes all kinds of problems. Really, it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's amazing how that works. No, and recruiting rankings on down the line. All right, I want to talk because Jill Spencer, who's uh, been a longtime friend, but have put together Gene Katie the brand, which uh, which the whole idea of the, the play hard, which was your, your certainly your mantra during your time here. You're selling T-shirts now, but you're also uh, really been involved with a lot of things uh, that uh, that are kind of important to you at, at your age too where this is a message that, that resonates with people about what how you want them to live well Jill Spencer and Mike Spencer are good yeah. friends of Kathleen and I as we become very good friends and they'll come to Myrtle Beach once in a while and we come up here and we're always with them and and uh, when Kathleen my my wife uh, uh, sold her taverns in Boston and came to Lafayette and lived she met Jill, and they got together, and they developed this brand. Yeah. They did it. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't even know anything You're about it. You're on for the ride, though. Yeah, exactly. So uh, they got the patent. Yeah. And that wasn't easy. Yeah. So they had to learn how to do that. And uh, it was just when they made it up. So it was like I didn't have much to do with it. So I just enjoyed the going along with it. But that play hard message has been it's still it's still right. uh, in Mackey Arena uh, above the clock at least I think it is and and it's still time to play hard and uh, it's always tell there. us about where that came from because I know that came with the in your days I think you brought it with you from, from Western Eddie Kentucky Sutton. oh yeah, from Eddie, well, Sutton. Eddie Sutton had it at Arkansas when we built that the, he built that program into a national power went the Final Four in '78 and that's why I got the Western Kentucky job because I was on a staff that went the Final Four it's that yeah. simple when you have a staff that gets attention by going to the Final Four, somebody will usually hire you. And they yeah. hired me at Western Kentucky, and I got lucky. And and uh, we won there a couple years and coached a USA team, and we won the gold medal on the USA team. And Fred Schaus saw me, yeah. who was assistant AD here then, and he came back and toured George King. that they When Lee Rose left here, they might want to hire that guy, young guy at Western Kentucky, which was me at that time because I was young then. And they hired me to come to Purdue. And uh, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me because – uh, the people at Purdue seem to hire guys and gals that got it. Yeah, they seem to hire people that were a good fit here. So 
I have was with a lot of great people here, unbelievably amount of people that really helped me. Uh, Bob DeMoss and Dale Samuels and George King and Fred Schaus, on and on and on. So the swimming coaches, the track coaches, they were all just very gracious to me. So I was very lucky. Uh, Dr. Combs, yeah. uh, uh, John DeCamp, that was, was the SID here, and all these people that were helpful in help developing the program. You don't do it by yourself. No. It takes a family. I talked to the student athletes last night. Yeah. And uh, I told them about it's not about me or you, it's about us. It's about the team, it's about the family, it's about everybody being together. Yeah, Kathy Wright Eager's leadership uh, program, John Wooden leadership program. We also were scared of you, though, too. When you came in, oh, you were geez. 42 years old. First time I ever saw you, you were wearing one of those uh, corduroy jackets with the, with the patches on the, on the elbows. And, I said, and you walked like you were, you were a gunslinger. So we were all, we were all scared of you. Uh, as a manager, I can speak. But we got over that. No, no, we never got over that completely. So that, but that I was a good. A healthy, a healthy amount of fear is a good thing for for. for for kids and uh, and and players, but you also, you know, like I said, you were you were blessed from the get get go to have some guys that thought like you, uh, a little bit. Brian Walker being one that uh, mm -hmm. was a guy that uh, kind of embodied who what you were about as well. Um, well Brian Walker was one of those guys who didn't think I knew much. But yeah. then I found out he he, was, still he probably was smarter than me. He well, he but is a smart. Now he's guy. a lawyer here in town, and uh, he had a great brother that played with him, and I I, I love their family. So yeah. it was like. He was a great guy, and I really appreciated him being part of that first team. All right, now next week uh, you've got you – know, you first, also, we're going to have on our website a little bit later uh, the link to how, to how you can buy the Gene, the, uh, play, Gene Cady Play Hard T-shirts, and University Spirit in town is selling them correctly and, uh, as well. So by all means, um, stop by and, uh, and pick one up. Um, you know, you have that opportunity next week uh, to go to the Purdue Ag Alumni Fish Fry, which is really one of the great traditions at Purdue, though it's now in Indianapolis. And uh, Bob Knight is going to join you. That's going to you're going to have a lot of a lot of mics and cameras in front of you next week. Not that you're not used to that, but uh, there's, that's going to that's going to be a fun event. Should be fun. Well, when the Ag Department asked me, you think that Bob Knight would be interested in coming to the Fish Fry? Because I used to love the Fish Fry here. Yeah. We had a great. Day. Oh yeah, they're nuts. That, that parade over oh, yeah. the armory and. It was Lori great. Williamson, they had, those Lori guys, Williamson yeah. was the best. Yeah, they, the whole pro, the whole ag department was great. They were they were great to me, and I loved it. I went to a lot of things with Maury Williamson to give talks around the state, and they asked me if they thought that they could get Bob Knight. And I said, Bob and I had become pretty good friends. Yeah. So he did TV for ESPN. Yeah. And I was coaching at St. John's. So we kind yeah. of sat down, and talked about some things, and, and everybody thought we hated each other. No. But we don't. We were just battling. You know, we wanted to win, and we were competitors. And and I said, I don't think you'll get him. <laughs> Bobby, lo and behold, they got Bobby to agree to come to that thing. I was really happy that we can do that. So are you gonna it's going to be fun. Are you going to get to spend any time with him outside of the event? You uh, know, you know, I don't know that. I hope so. Yeah. You know, he. Um, that I think it will be. A, it, it, you're going to get. I have a lot of people that are going to be interested in that as well. You know, 21 and 20, you are, and you, and you probably don't need to remind him that you beat him more than he beat no, you. I don't talk about that. I stuff. know you don't, but uh, with 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 respect to some of those battles, those. It, the, in fact, I was listening to uh, college sports radio show on on Sirius a couple of days ago, and they were talking about the best games uh, that they'd seen. Obviously, Duke and North Carolina, but they said Purdue and Indiana in the '80s and '90s when Bob Knight and Gene Cady went went toe to toe was a very very special thing. Why was it that way? I mean, you did not like to back down to anybody. It wasn't necessarily him, but it just was the way well, it was. Well, just uh, I don't know, circumstances. And uh, when I was at uh, Hutch, I used to get his tapes from the Army and yeah. watch his defensive drills. I used a lot of his – I just respected him. You know, I thought he, I thought he played the game right, played good man-to-man -man defense. He ran the passing game, and I liked that. And his kids graduated, and I respected that because that's the best thing ever happened to me when I got my degree. Yeah. Without a degree, I would never have moved up in the educational world. So – uh, he was just a guy that I looked up to and respected him. But if you worked at Purdue and said that about Bobby Knight, they didn't, they'd probably fire you. Yeah. So, you know, people didn't want to hear that. Well, they didn't want to hear In your first press conference here, you got up and said, I respect that guy. And they, some people took, a, took exception took, to yeah, that. Yeah, it's like, well, they don't understand the coaching world because you try to – you know, you, you have the. Now he did make, he did aggravate you at times. Oh, yeah. He, <laughs> no, he did more than that. Yeah, he took yeah. me off. So – but I always thought you should keep your friends close yeah. and your enemies closer. So Great I had that philosophy. philosophy. And I respected guys that won, and how they played was important to me because there's a reason why they won. Yeah. They taught fundamentals, yeah. which he did. Uh, he was tough on, in practices, and he played the game right. He played on offense where everybody had a chance to score. 
he or he got the ball to the right people, and he played tough defense. So and rebounded tough, and, and got back on defense to stop people. So there was a reason he won, and I really always respected that. And and I told him that, and he told me that one time I was the toughest guy he had to prepare for. So and I didn't understand that because I didn't think that at the time. So. Uh, I was saying, you mean to give me, uh, you're going to tell me you're complimenting somebody from Purdue? He said, shut up. Sit down. Sit down <laughs> but he never talk. did do that, though. He never would. And that's but what it he was does great. Now. I mean, he's just a competitor. Yeah. That was just him. Yeah, I want to shout out. We don't, you know, it's funny. We got this great guest, not many questions today, but uh, I do have people saying that they're working on their college calculus, a certain person out there very close to my heart that's doing that and watching uh, the coach today. So we appreciate that. You have the, the, um, uh, the, the, you're my, my, some of my favorite stories in, in, in the games against Knight, and there were games where you know, you were, you'd get a technical in the first two minutes, and I think maybe in your first game against mm -hmm. them, you got two yeah, in the assembly first. Assembly Hall. Uh, winning in Assembly Hall and or winning on the road in the Big Ten, one of the Period. toughest things to do. Not just Assembly Hall, but anywhere. The key to doing that, you know, you guys always were good at building a bunker mentality. Was it as simple as trying to, trying to have that us against them? No, it, was, it wasn't simple. It was about having older kids that understood the fact that it's going to be tough tonight and the road, no matter whether you're playing at Northwestern or Michigan or Indiana, it's going to be a tough game. And our older kids understood that. So that was one reason we won, because we had older kids that had been through the wars. All right, we have a couple more minutes left because you've got another appointment. You're a busy man, and we really have appreciated the, the time that you've taken to be over here. The state of college basketball today, I mean, you watch it closely, and, and obviously I'm, you watch Purdue, but you're watching college basketball. Good place, bad place. I mean, there's been talk about too much three-point shooting and, and not enough uh, balance. Uh, uh, if you were still coaching, which you were as of a couple of years ago, uh, how, how do you look at it? Well, I like it. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with it. I think people that criticize the game uh, haven't been in it much. But, uh, you know, the three-point shot changed the game. The shot clock changed the game. Uh, TV changed the game. Uh, the Internet changed the game. Everything changed. You have to adapt to change. I hoped as an old-school guy I was able to adapt a little bit to the changing world, and I tried to do that. I was conscious of that. And people maybe couldn't see that or didn't understand that, but I did work at that. And and uh, I like the game the way it is. It's a great game. It's sold out. Every Final Four sold out yeah. in it. Yeah, so and then there's, some. There's nothing wrong with it. They got billions of dollars by showing the basketball NCAA in, uh, in March to everybody. So they're making money off of it hand over foot. Now they can, because of TV, uh, like the Big Ten Network, the yeah. SEC Network, the Pac-12 Network, yeah. they're able to give money back to schools, and now they're able to pay athletes. So. Some athletes are getting 400 a month more, aren't they? Yeah. So it's kind of neat that the yeah, I was never for that because I think your scholarship was enough. But since they're able to have expenses, which they probably need more than they used to, that it's kind of neat. When I was in K State going to school in Manhattan, Kansas, we got uh, $15 a month extra for laundry. I know, was, but in today's that dollars, was, that's they always that, say that's about that the same. Good. I thought that was great. Plus, I got tuition, books, and fees, which is about four thousand dollars a year. So yeah, that was pretty good. That's got a free education, year. which I was lucky. All right, the Boilermakers this year. We're not going to ask you how you would coach them differently than Matt, because you because you would never answer that question. So I but, wouldn't do it. Yeah, I but do what he's doing. But what do you see? What are you seeing in terms of this challenge? What does this team have to do to to not necessarily to get over the hump, but to keep itself in that conversation come in March? Do you think? Well, you know my uh, expectations about Purdue, it was too much at first mm -hmm. from the media and yeah. the Internet and all that because the kids were big. The two most overrated things in basketball, Allen, is height and halftime scores. <laughs> okay. So that because they're big, everybody thinks they ought to be great. Well, big guys sometimes aren't as graceful as some guys, or some guys, are, they don't get the footwork down, or they don't catch the ball like they should. So just because you're big doesn't mean you're a great basketball player. I've had a lot of people say they were too little to play basketball in high school. I said, Size has nothing to do with basketball. So you might think it does, but it doesn't. So my best players were small. So uh, I wouldn't do anything different. I think he's doing a great job. I'm always, always a guy that Matt Painter was a guy that I knew was going to have a way to solve the objectives of what was going wrong. Yeah. I knew he was smart enough to do that. He had a smart dad and a mom, and he, was, he, he learned how to adjust to life. So he adjusted to me, didn't he? So he's, he's not <laughs> I'm the one that helped pick him. So. Morgan was good enough to let me help pick Matt to take the job, so I was very uh, uh, gracious to Morgan for letting me do that. So he has a lot of your same qualities, except for I was watching the uh, watching the Minnesota game. Brian was up there. 
he is too. He's so quiet on the bench, and he just sits oh, yeah. there at him and while all he's, hell's he's, breaking he's loose. He's classier and... than me. <laughs> <laughs> Now, he gets fired up now and then, but boy, I just thought, gosh, he's, he's well, just he sitting there with the hall. He didn't want to act like me, so he was smart. <laughs> his mother's, maybe his mother told him not to act like Katie. So, yeah, but yeah. you had people in your ear not act, telling you not to act like you did, and you well, did sometimes. My mother used to call me from Sacramento and say, hey, my dad, dad's teaching me lip reading. Knock it off because you weren't taught to talk like that. So I used to get chewed up by my mother for swearing. And, and your I, dad was. I knew the, I was wrong. Your dad was the calmest, most calm, wonderful gentleman. I don't know where you got Yeah, he that, was. He that, was. That stuff from Best man I ever knew. Yeah. Was great, my father. Great man. I had a chance to meet him once. Okay, well, Coach, we're going to let Coach go on to his next game. So was your gig. dad. Yeah, my dad was pretty good. I was yep. very, very fortunate. We are going to bring Brian Newbert in. I don't know if Brian can sing and dance for the last segment. We're going to talk a little football recruiting and, and obviously his trip to Minnesota and what he thinks will be ahead for Purdue men's basketball. We'll do that in two minutes on Golden Black Live. 